Hi, I'm Miss Goodman and I teach kindergarten with Miss Cole and I get the pleasure of reading my very favorite chapter in any book and that's the very last chapter because they usually are always happily ever after and so that's the reason why I enjoy it. So I'm going to read chapter 15 and it's called po Poetry Festival. Bert Breastbane was waiting at the door for us. Hurry on in. It's freezing, he said. Mrs. M Mr. Morales helped Mrs. Brisbane carry in our houses of bags of food and bedding. Who knows how long it you'll have to stay, he said. Mrs. Brisbane went on to make a, cottage, a pot of tea, and soon Mr. Brisbane was cleaning Og's tape. Mr. Morales may be the most important person at Longfellow School, but the principal rolled up his sleeves cleaned out and cleaned out my cage. He didn't even complain about what was in my potty corner. He did wear gloves and washed his hands afterward. This is a good lesson for all of us, said Mrs. Brisbane, as she brought in a tray of steaming cups of tea, a plate of cookies and some yummy pieces of broccoli and lettuce for me. If you decide to have a pet, you have to take total responsibility. Mr. Morales munched on a cookie. I think they took responsibility for themselves. How on earth did such small creatures knock down the big bag? I was wondering about that too, said Mrs. Brisbane. I think it was teamwork. A frog and a hamster? Never heard of such a thing, said Bert. I sure wish I'd seen those two, he smiled and shook his head. I always knew that Humphrey was sharp as a tack. And now we know there's a lot going on in Og's head too. Boing, Og croaked and he lunged at the side of the glass box. Mrs. Brisbane chuckled. He's feeling better. Looks like he's going to play ball, uh, play ball, play a game of leapfrog. Leapfrog is a game? Had I been wrong about Og since the very first night, instead of trying to scare me, he wanted to play. Like Mr. Brisbane, I wasn't sure what went on in Og's head, but he had some good ideas, like rescued me. He even had another one, another sound he was make. Everybody knew it but me, and that made me feel kind of special, like a friend. The sun come out that afternoon, and so did the snow clouds. While the yards were still covered with snow, the streets were clear and cars traveled freely again. Across the street from the Brisbane's, two children built a snowman. Inside the Brisbane house, I was more than happy to run mazes and play hide and squeak with Bert for old time's sake. Og watched from his glass house and said very little. On Monday, the roads had improved enough to go back to school. Thank goodness, because of the poultry, poetry festival was coming up on Friday and there was still a lot of work to do. Some of the students had worked on memorizing their poems and writing them out at home over the long weekend. Most had not. Garth Tugwell had changed poems three times. On Monday, he changed again. Mrs. Brisbane sent him to the cloak room to memorize his new selection. Mrs. Brisbane surprised Kirk by asking for his help. You've been a lot better lately after knowing when to be funny and when to be quiet, she said. Now I need your help. We don't want this poultry festival to be too serious. We want it to be fun. Would you introduce the poems for us? Kirk's whole face lit up. Sure. Be sure to make it funny, she told him. By the end of the day on Tuesday, the bulletin board was covered with illustrated poems of the students had copied out. Along the edge of the board was a cut out picture of famous poets. Along from Longfellow to a guy named Shakespeare, a lady named Emily Dickinson. Late in the day on Wednesday, my classmates finished their Valentine's boxes. What they did with ordinary cardboard boxes was excellent. Some of them were covered in red hearts glitter and pieces of lace. Others were covered with buttons and lots of paint. Garth had a big dinosaur on the side. 
Miranda's mailbox was cut out pictures of her family posted on it. Her mom, her dad, Abby, Amy, baby Ben, and yes, Jim. Uh, Tabitha's mailbox had pictures of basketballs, footballs, and soccer balls glued across the outside. Then, surprise, Mandy presented Oz with a green box with pictures of frogs and insects all over it. And AJ gave me a box covered in gold and furry looking material. It wasn't real. I checked. As nice as it was, I felt sad. Sad, sad. Because no matter how many Valentines I received, there was no way I could make Valentines for everyone in the class. How could I let them know how much I valued their friendship? I was still feeling low when Aldo arrived Wednesday night. He was in unusually, an unusually good mood. It's a beautiful evening, gentlemen, and I had a good, I have good news to share with you. He announced as he wheeled in his cart. I could use some good news, Aldo. I squeaked along. Boing, says Oz. Aldo pulled a chair out next to the cages. Instead of pulling out his lunch or a tree for me, he pulled out a piece of paper. Behold, my first grade, grade from college, a test of psychology. I wonder if he was in class with Natalie, the babysitter. My grade, as you can plainly see, Otto held the paper up to my cage. It's an A. Can you believe that, buddies? Three cheers for Otto. I squeaked as I hopped on my wheel for a joyful spin. I hadn't known this. I hadn't shown this to Myra yet. I'm saving it for her Valentine's present, along with flowers and candy, of course. I think this grade will be her favorite gift. Aldo leaned back, smiled with satisfaction. Oz dove into the pool with a huge splash. I think a little water goes on. Aldo, but he didn't seem to mind. Splash away, Oz, my friend, Aldo said. It makes it makes a happy sound. Oz splash because he was happy. And I thought about the splashing was that it was irritating. Aldo was Reading from ear to ear, almost like a frog. You see before you a happy man. There is nothing better in the world than to have someone to share good news, even bad news with. You see, Mar Maria is my wife, and she's also my best friend. I stopped spinning because I felt a little dizzy. I learned a bit about friendship this year by watching my classmates in room 26. There were friends who got really mad and made up afterwards. There were friends who got stuck together, who had stuck together through thick and thin. There were friends who reached out to you even when you didn't think you needed a friend. There was friends who were actually rescued when you were in trouble. There were new friends, old friends, silver and gold friends. Later that night, I was sorry, sorry, sorry I ever doubted Oz was my friend. I hadn't understood that sometimes a frog felt jealous and sometimes he feels splash, splashy happy. And it had even come through to me when I needed help. So how do you say thank you to a frog? I decided to write a poem. Not just a roses are red and frogs are green poem, but a poem that said what I really felt. Pulled out my notebook and started to write. The next day was spent rehearsing for the poetry festival and straightening up the room. Boy, these kids' tables were pretty messy. I didn't pay much attention. I was hunkered down in my sleeping nest, riding my hamster heart out. Friday was Valentine's Day, and everyone was excited. In the morning, the children mailed their Valentine's cards um, in the big box on Mrs. Brisbane's desk. During recess, the teacher sorted out the cards and delivered them, humming happily as she dropped them into the box. After recess, the students opened their cards. There was a lot of giggling and even some crunching, since Mrs. Brisbane had also dropped candy hearts into, into all the boxes. Out of the blue, AJ shouted, Hey, hold on there! There's, where, that got everybody's attention. I got a card from Martin B. Seth groaned loudly. Now listen, he said. He's sorry, A.J. explained. I got one too, said Garth. Miranda and um, Heidi had also gotten I'm sorry cards from Marty. But he's so mean, 
Mamie blurted. People can change, said Mrs. Brisbane. I think it must have been quite difficult for Martin to write those cards, but I gave, but he gave them to me to deliver. Maybe it's time to give him a second chance. Whew, give Martin Bean a second chance? Would be easy, but I recall that once he got started, he was actually pretty nice when he handed out prizes at the birthday party. Maybe Aldo's, Aldo's talk was with him had done some good. No wonder he got an A in psychology. I gave him a second chance. I squeaked. Of course, it came out. Squeak, squeak, squeak. I hadn't forgotten you, Humphrey, said Mrs. Bisbane. She came around to help Og and me with our mailboxes. She received cards from all the students in the class. Each one was special, but the one I remembered the most was from Miranda. Through Hamster doesn't have a rhyme. I love you, Humphrey, all the time. He figured out how to write a poem with the word hamster in it after all. I had one more card in the mailbox with Og. It was from Brazil. Yes, Miss Mack had remembered me with a teeny little card that said, Humphrey, you'll always be a special friend. Love, Mrs. Mack. She sent a letter to the whole class as well with greetings from, from, her, from her pupils in Brazil. As wonderful as it was to receive those cards, I kept my one eye on the clock all morning because I had a special mission to accomplish before lunch. A hamster's work is never done. The bell finally rang and the students left, which was good. Mrs. Brisbane stayed behind, which was bad. She busily rearranged all the chairs into a big half circle. She picked scraps of paper off the floor and straightened a few tables. Wasn't this woman going to eat? At least she glanced up at the clock, picked up her lunch bag, and hurried out of the room. I didn't have much time, so I tore a page out of my book. I jiggled and locked the lock in it that doesn't lock. Miss flung open the door and slid down the table. Og started boinging in alarm, but I didn't have time to explain. I raced across the floor as fast as my legs would carry me straight to Mrs. Brisbane's desk. When I got there, I gasped in surprise. My plan was to climb up her chair and take a giant leap onto her desk. It was dangerous and risky. Sometimes you had to be bold. However, the teacher had ruined everything by moving her chair far, far away. Away from her desk, into the circle of chairs for the children. Even worse, her desk didn't have legs to climb on. It was a solid block of wood. My big plan was completely spoiled. The clock ticked away. My only choice was to set the piece of paper on the floor near the desk and scramble back to the table. I grabbed onto the cord from the blinds and began to swing back and forth until I got up to the top of the table. I took the final leap and scurried, scurried back to my cage, pulling the cage door shut behind me. Boing, 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 croak, croaked Og. You'll understand soon, I told him. I hope. After lunch, Mrs. Brisbane finally, finally returned to the classroom, followed by the other students. The room mothers arrived with punch and cookies. Next, the other students entered. Everyone was so busy saying hello and admiring the decorations that I lost track of Mrs. Brisbane. I could hear her, though. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can take your seats, we're ready for the poultry festival to begin. She talked about how we'd been studying and all the hard work we'd put in. Then she turned the celebration over to Kirk Chin. Kirk was in a good form. He introduced each student with a short poem. Rhymes were funny, but they didn't hurt anybody's feelings. For instance, when it was Heidi's turn, Kirk said, Here's something funny by Heidi Hooper. When it comes to poems, you can't top her. He introduced Tabitha by saying, Tabitha knew. But boy, can she rhyme. I hope she stays a long, long time. And AJ's poem, he said, AJ's poem makes him proud. So don't be surprised if he speaks real loud. AJ did too. I was proud, proud, proud of my classmates as one by one they stood in front of the room and recited their poems. Heidi recited the frog poem she wrote instead of her smiley poem. Tabitha performed a funny poem about a baseball player called Casey. Uh, Shayla recited the dove poem. 
pay attention are, lost his place in his home, but he started over again and did fine. If anybody forgot a word, Mrs. Brisbane whispered it and nobody seemed to notice. The parents clapped heartily for each and every poem. I did too. Then my heart sang, as Mrs. Brisbane said. That concludes this year's poultry festival. I hope you all stay for refreshments. My plans had failed utterly. I glanced over, glanced over at Og. He was still smiling. He didn't know what I had planned. Mrs. Brisbane kept talking. I have one more poem. A lot to share. I found this scrap of paper on the floor as you arrived. I think it expressed the feelings of the children in this room have for each other. It's tiny and a little hard to read, but I will try. A friend doesn't have to be a work of art. Just have a heart. A friend doesn't need to have fur on the head to care. A friend doesn't have a thing to do but like you. A friend doesn't need to say a word to be heard. It's not so hard to be a friend in the end. The room was silent until Heidi's mom started the applause and everybody joined in. There's a scratching kind of scribbling at the bottom. I can't make out the name, said Mrs. Brisbane. Would the people who wrote this like to stand up and identify himself or herself? I was standing up all right when I was squeaking at the top of my voice. I wrote it. I wrote it for Og. It's my Valentine's for him. Sounds like Humphrey knows who wrote it, Mrs. Golden joke, and everybody laughed. Everybody except Og. Boing, boing, he shouted, hopping up and down at last. I had gotten through to him, and now I knew exactly what he was saying. You're welcome, Og, I replied. You're welcome. You're greeny, green, lumpy, bumpy, hairless, googly-eyed, cricket-eating friend. You're entirely welcome. Later that night, I looked over at Og as he dove into his swimming pool with a giant splash. He looked the same at every, while everything was different. What had seemed like a sneery sleer was really a friendship grin. The splashing that once annoyed me made me feel good because I knew Og was happy, happy, happy. And a lunge that one scared me just meant Og wanted to play a game. Sometimes humans are hard to understand, especially when they act mean like Marty Mean or get crabby like Abby. But with patience and a little psychology, can you, you can usually figure them out. It was the same with frogs and even hamsters. I had made a few mistakes, but I managed to keep my old friends in room 26 and make a new one too. Suddenly my heart went boing, as I thought about this shiny silver new friend, my friend Og. And it says, and of, of what shall a man be proud, but he is not proud of his friends, by Robert Louis Stevenson, a Scottish novelist and poet. And last, Humphrey's Guide to the Care and Feeding of Friends. The first one is, you need, if you act like a jerk and tease people, you don't have any friends, guaranteed. If Number two, if you do the opposite and are as nice to people, you'll have friends. It, will, it might take a while, but you'll have friends. Number three, if you act like a jerk to your friends and they get mad, but you're really, 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 really sorry, and, they let, and you let your friends know, they will probably forgive you. Number four, just don't do it too often. See number rule number one, which is if you act like a jerk and tease people, you won't have any friends. Number five, a best friend can be a relative, like a stepsister or even a wife. Number six, people don't always look so, don't always look so, but boys and girls can be friends. And I totally messed that up, so I'm going to say it again. Number six, people don't always think so, but boys and girls can be friends. Number seven, sometimes you may want to be friends, but somebody with somebody, but that person or frog doesn't want to be friends back. That seems sad, 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 but it's not because there are other people out there waiting to be friends with you. You just have to look at them, keep looking, and don't give up. And number eight, a friend is someone you like to be with and you don't even have to talk with or squeak. Number nine, friendship has its own language, even if you don't Understand the words your friend said. You can understand the meaning. And number 10, you might not know 
somebody as your friend until you have a problem and you realize and you realize you care. P.S. Tegla Galuzzi is a capital of Honduras, a country in Central America. Look it up on the map and look up how to spell.